coming. Oh, oh. Hello and welcome to Sports by Compion. My name, of course, is Stephen Compion, and I'm here to talk to you guys about some rugby and shit. And also, I'm joined here by my ever present co host, the power, the brains behind Sports by Compion. Corey's in the house. How are you, sir? Doing it fantastic. I've started a new life goal of growing a beard, as you can see. Ooh. It's happening. It's happening Love very it. slowly. Love it. Love it. Uh, here by will, winter. Corey will also be playing his very first rugby ever at the infamous Horfest slash Luck of the Draw tournament coming up very next weekend, Corey. It's going to be very time this releasing. I think this will release like tomorrow or something, which will be Wednesday. Uh, so, yeah, next, uh, next Saturday, if you're in the area of Rockford, Come out, watch some horror fest, play some horror fest, whatever you're into. Camp out, let's have a party. It's gonna be a great time. Corey's gonna play behind the beginning of my beard. Probably gonna score person. like so many tries. It's gonna be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, speaking of people not really scoring tries, Corey, the USA rugby team uh, decided to have a nice little summer tour, which um, you know would have been nice, you know, to be like, all right, guys, you know, we didn't qualify for the World Cup and we're mad about it. And we're going to come out in this summer series and really show the world that they underestimated us. And we should have been in that fucking World Cup. And you know what? That team that was getting their ass kicked the whole World Cup, we're going to play them in our first game just to show you guys. And that's what they did, Corey. They brought in Romania in SeaGeek Stadium, no less. The Chicago Hounds fans, as well as U.S. fans in general, were there to support the boys. We were very loud, very rampant. Uh, Sports by Copy does have shorts up. Check them out. We're going to upload more of them. I uh, actually need to give that to Dan so you can have a chance to do that. Uh, but regardless, Corey, big, big game. It's Friday night. Let's see our boys win a, win a game, huh? And they did come out firing. We came out with an early, very, very early try. I was fighting my seat, and they score in the first couple seconds. Nope, just kidding. We're going to take that one away. Uh, but no kidding, we're going to score again. Okay, cool. This one does, does get to stay. We're up firing fast, dude. We're cool, doing cool shit. We're like, you know, we're like, yeah, we're fast. We're, we're, we're rugby guys. But, you know, Romania, to their credit, was just taking the punches and just kept fucking tackling, dude. They're so good at fucking tackling. It was really annoying. These fucking Romanians just would not let us go through to score on them. Once, like, once they got settled, got through the first couple of crazy U.S. tries, dude, it was a slugfest. Both sides actually were playing some fairly good defense. The difference was the U.S. kept what I believe was the better team on the day, kept on pounding it into the Romanian territory, but could not fucking score, dude. They could not score. They could not get penalties so they could kick penalty kicks. They just would turn it over. And it was just like, oh, my God, dude, the amount of turnovers they had in the fucking Romanian territory is out of control for me. Uh, very, very sad stuff for them. Um, you know what Romania did? They also would push into the U.S. territory with lots of kicks. It was just piles of kicks in this game. Um, and the Romanians would get into the territory, and the U.S. would immediately get a penalty. And boom, you know what we're going to do? We're going to kick. Dude, this fucking Romanian kicker, four out of five on the day. And some of these were fucking far. And the fans, we did not respect the kicker at all. We were giving him so much crud. And this dude just persevered, pounded these kicks in, kept remaining in the game, kept remaining in the game. And it's like, you're just looking at the U.S. like, guys, what are we doing? Put these guys away. They have fucking four kicks. that They can't score on us other than one try, which was this big-ass Samoan-looking dude. And, oh, my God, bro, he just plowed over our poor little wing. And dude, that's one of the wings who plays for uh, the Hounds, too, because he normally plays 15 or 10 for, 10 for the Hounds. My man's just out there on the wing, and it's just like, do one of those boom, boom, boom. Like, the guy was just moving in like seconds. <laughs> like the poor little guy in the there, ground. Why is there a big old Samoan playing for the Romanians? I think that's suspect, Corey, if you ask me. <laughs> but, you just know, out of, here like, stealing the good Samoan I mean, people? To be fair, uh, one of our U.S. Well, in the second half, uh, USA uh, 12 got, got a nice try. Beautiful Afro on this man. Fucking just ran over some dudes to get the try. Uh, apparently used to be an uh, Italian international player. So us, we currently just jack players from the Tier 1 nations if we can, which makes sense. And not all of those guys are going to be good enough to play for their national teams on the Tier 1 nations. So they're like, yeah, all right, whatever. I'll, oh, my mom was a Romanian. Sure. Or or they settled there and they got residency. This dude's like half Italian, half American? 
I didn't really look into his details. I honestly only found out um, whenever he was in the Scotland game because he got a try there. So uh-huh. they started talking about that, um, how he, he used to play for Italy. Because like, when I was at the game, of course, I'm not hearing these commentators. Really good guys. Uh, we'll get into that with the Scotland game. But uh, that's kind of how I was watching that game, which is commentators. Uh, very informative to actually learn about who the heck these guys are and <laughs> what's going on. Uh, but anyway, dude, yeah, really depressing watching this USA team. And then sure enough, man, they kick up another kick, get up 22-20. There's still like 10, 15 minutes left. I forget exactly. But like, we got time. It's like, okay, let's just maybe stop fucking around. But there was this feeling in the pit of my stomach, and I'm sure I wasn't the only one that, oh, boy. And sure enough, man, the fucking U.S. gets into position, Corey, to win this twice within the last three minutes of the game. We have a chance to kick this in. God bless our the, our boy AJ something or another with playing 10. Missed both of them. Like, oof, bro. Tough day at the office for your man. Um, the final one he missed was only a couple seconds left, and that was game. Uh, you know, actually, they did get the ball back, and it wasn't a little brief spirit of, oh, maybe we're going to do something, and then they kicked it and couldn't recover it. So, yeah, we lost. So it was just a random tournament that we decided to have just some some friendly like friendly it's like friendlies yeah yeah kind of like friendlies um but anyway huge disappointment to lose to romania um uh, at home just yeah pretty embarrassing uh anyway we went over and hosted scotland over there in maryland you know the following week which you know good luck with that and uh you know to be fair dude the boys put up a fight you know i'm sure the final score of 42 14 uh you know may not reflect that but you're also playing Scotland, like a fucking proper tier one nation. And honestly, the the Americans were tackling super well in the very early game. Um, The first try was a little bit ridiculous, right, to Vanderfleet, who tied uh, the Scotland record for most international caps. So I don't know if he ended up breaking it because I didn't see him score their last. Oh, no. Steven turned into a pumpkin. All right. Well, will we wait for him? I'm here to tell you that... Pumpkins are bad. They're actually they're a gourd. Um, other gourds are eggplant. Eggplant <laughs> also a gourd. Oh, hello, dude. I was <laughs> explaining pumpkins. Dude, I'm just saying this freaking what's it called? The, this mouse thing that you can just click in and out thing. Real treacherous. <laughs> Real treacherous. Um, but anyway, of course, <laughs> USA Rugby is host of Scotland. It was tough, dude. I mean, you know, what do you say about a 42-14 to 14 game? But they did put up some fight. You know, the score may not reflect this, but Scotland was, like, in USA territory, like, the entire game, Corey. The whole game, they're just, like, pounding on the door, like, just hey, can we come in? And he was just like, stop, stop right here, bro. Stop right now. No, stop. And, dude, reflection of the, of the remaining game, super sloppy. Tons of penalties by the boys. Like, great tackling. Real good effort. They're flying up. Uh, what's his fucking name? The 14 from the 14 from the USA team. And I think I have their lineups here for this exact reason. Corey, look at that. Okay, so Luke Tardy, first of all, is a hound. So shout out him. He played through some injury in this game and kept it going. And then, yeah, this guy, Connor Mc- McCann. Dude, hell of a game out of him. Um, apparently, it was an overall, first overall pick of the Seattle Seawolves a couple years ago in, in MLR. And uh, he was flying all around at wing, dude, really coming up and hitting motherfuckers, letting them know at three really big tackles. So if you're a wing out there frustrated, thinking you're not getting enough game time or not getting enough action when you're on the field, fucking look at this guy, Connor, and find out how to be involved with the game. You know? As a no, Corey, do you? Um, I, I have no idea what a wing does. What? What is that? Like wings kind of chill out there on the outside and wait for the ball to come to them, or they got to make big tackles. You know those two things, but also so they're basically like, a safety. You, you could also no, not really. You could also be like Connor and just be involved. Is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, uh, this kind of Lopini, no, no disrespect to him, but terrible tackle attempt on Vanderfleet for that first try against uh, Scotland. To just I don't know, he threw his body, but like. It did not aim very well. It sort of just bounced right off of Vanderfleet. It's like, oh, anyway, let me go tie up this uh, international t- try record. <laughs> but anyway, uh, can't, like I said, I can't take too much away from these guys. I mean, we did beat Scotland six years ago. So I mean, they're not, also, they certainly didn't do that. If you're playing against a guy who's setting the record for scoring internationally in like an international sport, you kind of 
you can't be surprised. That's like trying to tackle Derrick Henry, right? But it was a terrible tackle attempt, Corey. Uh, <laughs> it was really, really bad. That was the that was the thing. The commentators were like, "That was too easy. That was ridiculous." And yeah, I agree 100. percent But yeah, this gentleman right here going Bandar, whatever. You get the point. Stud player. But yeah, you're right. Um, anyway, it was an overall huge surprise. The U.S. just couldn't stop those malls, dude. I mean, they stopped some of them, but there was just they kept coming these malls. As opposed to Romania just taking all these penalty kicks. Scott was like, all right, well, we'll fucking kick it right next, right at your five, and then we'll drive them all into your uh, tri zone. And the U.S. is like, no, come on, don't do that. And that's, and that's what they did anyway, you know? So, so, these, I mean, is there a picture of the U.S. lineup? I'm sure, maybe on the USA. Let's scroll uh, down dude, a bit. I was trying to look for stuff. Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah, here okay. we go. I was trying to look for information on this game, Corey. Oh, my God, it is not out there on the internet, dude. Like, they did not make it easy. So it looks yeah, like here's a the handful boys. of Samoan gentlemen. Well, this is the Italian gentleman I was telling you about. Um, I was going to yeah. say, like, the, like, clearly all the, uh, well, <laughs> what, what's a tactful way of saying this? All the athletic skin tones <laughs> are playing basketball and football. <laughs> There's not a black dude on this roster. <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Where are the black dudes at? <laughs> Like great, great question. Anytime, I wonder who these backups are. I think Bryce Campbell. I, I don't know Bryce Campbell. I think who. I think the black dudes just haven't figured out <laughs> the soccer. They haven't figured out soccer yet. They're still playing the sports and football, or they're playing the American sports where you make money. So <laughs> until the black dudes find these fringe sports, the states is going to keep getting wrecked. Fair enough, but it is cool that MLR like had so many representatives in this team. You know, like, as opposed yeah. to just grabbing any random internationals they could. So, like, Greg Peterson plays for the Legion. You know, as I mentioned, Luke Hardy with the, with the Hounds. Uh, this little this gentleman here, the tiny guy I was telling you about, that bounced up. he's also a fierce tackler. I've also seen him, like, lay some dudes out. So, shout out to Nate uh, Osberger. I want to say Berger. Uh, he also plays for the Hounds. I forget who AJ plays for. Maybe for, um, what's it called? Maybe for the old Legion. Old Legion has, I mean, not Legion. Old Glory has a couple of players on this team, too. You know, Legion's out here. Seattle Seals, as I mentioned. Connor McCann. So that's pretty cool to me. It kind of reminds me of, like, um, oh, do you remember Super Campeones? And, you know, like, and like your boy was going through playing all those all those other teams. And then, like, you know, it came time for the Japan team to all play together. It was like all the old characters all played together on the same team. Kind of cool. But, so how does... How does this work? So are these all look like, so if this is the US team, are they all like um, US citizens in theory or do yeah. they just I mean in some way or another they must have citizens uh, you must be a citizen. I don't think you could play as a resident. So it's probably US citizen. So like our boy who's who uh played for the Italian team, maybe he has like an Italian mom, um but you know, a US dad or something. Right, or he married into it. That too. So either way, uh, yeah, I assume these guys are all for citizens. Bryce Campbell, I'm pretty sure, plays for the uh, for the Hounds. I should know more, Corey. But it's hard to grasp these guys' names. I don't know why. It's because they're just well, new to the dude, sport I mean, or what. Like, I know some – I'm starting to pick up on the on the flankers really quickly. Like, Patty Ryan, I thought, had a pretty good game. Uh, definitely a lot of stupid penalties, like most of the USA team. But he was flying around, hitting people, and trying to be involved, as the seven should. With football, you have their names thrown at you all the goddamn time. Whereas these dudes, like, yeah, I guess like I haven't seen enough. This isn't even covered anywhere. It's so, like, very hard. It was hard, this, dude. Was, watching the game. Even the USA Rugby website didn't have like fixture results. You know what I mean? Like, make it a little easier. They're mostly focused on the USA Olympic team, which is doing better than these fixtures. So hard to fault them too much for that. But you know what I mean? Just like, wait, so this is down. happening at the same time as the USA Rugby? As the Olympics. The Olympic yeah, the Olympics so are is on this right like now the B No, that's sevens. This is fifteens. But still, you're going to send your best seven over there. So you're basically... Not necessarily. Like the, guys who are, the guys who are really good at sevens aren't necessarily always going to be good at fifteens. But that is always like a thing. So, for example, um, France in this last Six Nations, which we've covered a couple times. Does that ring a bell? Yeah. Yeah, so Six Nations, um, you know you know DuPont, the number nine for France, probably the best rugby player in the world? Sure. Wait, so and, you mean UK and friends is... 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot our real fun name for them. Yeah, UK and Friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, to pause, the best rugby player in the world is like always involved in that tournament because he's obviously friends. This year, he didn't play with them because he went and did sevens somewhere else in some other tournament that was going on. I it could have been the Olympics because that's happening right now. But I don't fucking know, dude. He wanted to play seven somewhere else and fucking won the, won the gold over there. Uh, it was pretty, it's pretty funny. But yeah, so they can pick and choose, I guess, more or less what they do. But mostly, if you're like a top tier great rugby player, you're going to want to shine in 15. That's where gotcha. all the money is because that's where, you know, if clubs see you doing well there, that's where you can go get a contract in Europe and such. And then the MLR. Whereas sevens, like actually competition wise, where they pay them, I don't know if that's like super happening other than like, you know, countries and such. Right. This is all speculation, of course, because Sports by Copy isn't nearly as informed as it probably should be, but we like to give you guys vague information, as we've said from one of our very first episodes. Vague information, man. Vague information well, about we're gonna sports. we're gonna give you the questions to research on your right, own. right, exactly. <laughs> it's about sports that you may or may not even care about. But either way, we will tell you about them. Uh, speaking of sports that you may or may not care about, the MLR is going into their playoff hunt, Corey. That's not accurate. They're in the playoffs. All right, all the teams here like they did the thing, and now they're in the playoffs about it. So obviously, we got our Chicago Hounds, which shout out to them. Had a beautiful home win against the San Diego Legion to get that, to really get into position to be able to do that because they did lose the following week against the Nola or the Jackals. I forget. But they lost did the following they... week on the road, but then they won um, against Miami to claim the playoff hopes. So but it couldn't have happened without that great win against the Legion. So shout out to the Hounds. Dude, they play so good sometimes, Corey. Like when they beat the Hounds, I mean, when they beat the Legion, they had the jack, the jackets on the ropes a couple times. They had Noel on the go, the ropes. They had the Sea Wolves on the ropes. So like they can be one of the best teams. It's just they're kind of like the USA team. They just do dumb shit sometimes. Did they like barely scrape in here? I remember last time we were reviewing this, they were yeah not winning a lot. <laughs> like I said, I went, we, that, they won that Legion game at home, and then that kind of set them up in the in the stretch. All right, fair enough. What what was yeah. their record? I don't know, Corey. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're the they made it, man. Someone else was worse, and they're, <laughs> they're not the here. Fuck, they're in the fucking playoffs, bro. All these questions. <laughs> the important part. They made it. Yeah. Don't ask what now. time I got to the party. Just be happy I'm here. I'm here, I'm here now. Anyway, it's just to parry up everybody more or less to where you are originally for this first round. Uh, you got the jacket. It's awful Christian. Of They're them. hosting, right? Are they not hosting? Are they going? No. Yeah, they're hosting. They're hosting. They're hosting the Old Glory, who also just barely scraped into the playoffs. Shout out Mr. Shades, Dan the Man himself. His team is in the playoffs as well. Uh, the Old Glory has beaten the Jackets before, Corey. It's always a close game. Uh, this will be, it'll be good another Good test for the Jackets, you know. They kind of looked a little wobbly going into this year of the defending champions, you know. What do they do for stadiums? They just play on football fields, or? Well, here in Chicago, they do. They play on a soccer field. So I don't know where Seakeek Stadium. I don't know if they're still like the Chicago team's stadium or if they're they're too small now. But either way, that's where we play. So just bigger, bigger, biggish venues, you know. Gotcha. Somewhere big with a lot of grass where they can paint it. Usually soccer fields and such, yeah. Whereas, like, if in the case of Houston, it's usually on football fields. Because wasn't so. it like the Raiders way back when they used to play on, like, a baseball field like Savages? Yeah. Yeah, it's also because Al Davis is very cheap. Uh, but anyway, um, Houston Sabercats hosted the uh, Jackals. So the Jackals are one of those crappy teams as well. You know, terrible last year or, or since they came into the league, but now they've been, you know, it's kind of cool to see, honestly, the Jackals, Old Glory, and Hounds all in the playoffs together in the first, you know, kind of like teams just barely scrape in there for. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. It's progressing the way it should, you know, because these are the teams that came in like two, three years, maybe not Old Glory, but Jackals and Hounds came in within the last two to three years. Now they've made the playoffs, whereas the teams just came in or at the bottom, where they should be, you know, I guess. I mean, Big logical. year for for Texas teams in sports overall. Got the Texans becoming somebody. I mean, but can they close anything out? So not to, well, we didn't really end up covering it, but the USFL championship, 
kind of a bummer of a game, according to Good Sports, which, you know, after I watch his review, I tend to agree with him. Uh, the Brahmas ended up doing absolutely nothing. Their quarterback looked like he didn't really care about winning. Dude slid short and ran out of bounds before the first down marker. Very weird behavior out of a court. Very weird behavior from a quarterback who's in, you know, a championship game. And also, like, right. if you if the rumors are true that he had an NFL opportunity, he didn't want to get hurt. Do you think this film is going to help you, sir? That's a rough film. That's a really That's rough. Really film. bad film, sir. You don't yeah. want this. Also, like, as the team, you're like, what? The guy leading us is more worried about not getting hurt than he is about fucking winning? Like, that's not... That's Bro, not one of his old linemen, I don't know if he was yelling at the quarterback, but right as he split, you just see him just be like, oh, what? <laughs> like, yeah. Anyway. Um, anyway, yeah. So but that's, I think also, uh, like, in basketball, didn't... I don't, I don't know enough about basketball, but I thought there was a, a Texas team in there that was doing well as well in the final. I could be wrong though. Maybe it's somewhere. Oh yeah, no, yeah, you're right. Dallas, Dallas did make it. Dallas made it all the way to the final, and then kind of got um, kind of got housed by by Boston. But you know. So Texas is strong second place this year. Strong, strong, <laughs> strong contenders of, this year. A lot of contenders. <laughs> but a lot of like teams is... to the playoffs. Some of them are hitting. Some of them aren't. Definitely not taking it. Oh yeah, uh, the Dallas um, Stars made it all the way to like the Western Conference Finals in, in the NHL. So, yeah, yeah. But, they're really like, contenders. Real contenders, man. But based off of where they came from, like, weren't the Jackals, like, the worst team in the league last year? The Texans were definitely bottom of the barrel last year. Like Jack Jackals, this is their third year, and they weren't quite bottom. They were, like, sharing the bottom of the barrel with the Hounds. So, yeah. That, that's what I was kind of saying. It's kind of a good progression for them because now we got new teams like the Miami Sharks, you know, um, the, the North Carolina team, the L.A. team. So, these teams have well, – we, we managed to stay above the new ones, at least. Right, right. Take that, anyway, you guys. Houston's you got really to ride the barrel. Houston's only lost like a handful of games to like the Seattle Seawolves and such. So this is going to be a real tough game for the Jackals going into Houston to play these guys. I guess we'll see what happens, huh? And now, Corey, the game break that you've been waiting for. The one of Noah Gold. How did hosted the Chicago Hounds. Um, you know what I don't like about this, dude? It's starting to become like a rivalry with us and Noah Gold, but unfortunately, they have the better hand of it so far. Like, I feel like they come to us, and like, the first year they came to us seemed pretty much a lot better. This last time, they beat us by a decent amount, but man, I felt like we were the better team and just let opportunities slip away. Um, anyway, here we are again, playing these clowns yet again for the year. Uh, I'm not super excited about it. What is it with fucking New Orleans teams being the bane of my existence? Frickin' New Orleans, man. To bottom that, dude. So why why is Dan Dola Gold? Dan is not Nola Gold. Dan is old glory DC because he lives in Baltimore, DC. That makes no, more he lives sense. in Maryland, DC. That makes more sense. I for some I don't reason, know how well, DC stuff works. Leave me alone, people. Well, you. Well, you're <laughs> <joking around. laughs> I thought that you said Dan was a fan of Nola Gold, and I was like, that's a random team, but I'm here for it. No, no, I definitely said old glory. All right, so I'm on board with hating Nola Gold. Then yeah, fuck you, Nola Gold. But yeah, dude, we gotta beat them, Hounds. Let's go, cloud. boys. So they gotta go to New Orleans, beat them. Um, it would be sweet. It'd be really cool, and I would be, I'd be about it, dude. I wouldn't be like, oh no, the I'm Hounds have advanced, yeah. advanced in the playoffs. You know, Sunday. right? Sunday game as well, so we should be able to get down volleyball and uh, really lock into that game. Hell yeah. I, Steven, wow. will be drinking beer, not watching the game. But if I think about it, I'll be like, let's go, Hounds, from far away, away from a TV, not sure if the game is on at that particular time. But I will send positive vibes, maybe cool. at the right time. Cool. Maybe I'll even remember to text you so you can really be sure to send the positive vibes. Right, right. Got to, got to channel the vibes at the right time. Channel them at the exact moment so that we can win us our, our first playoff game in franchise history, Corey. I'm here for it. Anyway, uh, two teams who definitely won play, uh, playoff games in the MLR. Seattle Seawolves take on the C uh, San Diego Legion. Two heavyweights going out in the very first round of the playoffs. You gotta kind of love it, honestly. How do they decide these matchups? So the well, Legion kind of had a rough year. It's basically based on conference and where they ended up and all that kind of good stuff. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, well, let's see the standings real quick. That should explain more or less how this all works. Uh, but yeah, basically the Legion kind of had a rough year. They were like really up and down all year. Um, they would rally and then they'd suck for a while and they would rally. But ultimately, as you can see, they ended up in third place, which means they got to go to Seattle to play uh, the second place. And then Dallas season. has to go play the, the first place. 
Noel Gold Hounds, second and third place, so they'll play each other. And then the Glory, who just barely scraped in, will go play the three jackets. So that's how all that works, of course. Okay, okay. Do you like that? Do you know what makes you happy? or um, Anthem or Anthem? I don't know. Whoever those guys are at the bottom. Got to get the win, boys. Come on now. Oh, they Anthem had a rough year. Seven points all season? No, no, no. No, they, they got seven points, you know, for their team as a season. Uh, no. No, they scored um tries four. Tries four, four seven tries on the season. Seven. I don't know, dude. Let's see if they say this. Yeah, tries four. So they had forty seven tries, which is actually a shitload. They had more than Miami did. Take that Miami. And then tries again. So that's, this is why they So they just up. don't play the defense. This is why they were yeah, they pretty much go up piles of points every time. They always have tons of high scoring games. Not about the tackling. Uh, that's fun. Yeah, they don't really I mean they're like, What? Defense? I mean, but hey, may that fucking prove to all you fucking defender haters out there. Play bad defense and you will be the bottom of the league, motherfuckers. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> all right, but, are you so going to pick a team? You're not going to, you're not going to, beer. are you going to beer for the hounds or are you going to pick your own team and be your own independent person? Um, I don't see any New York teams, so I guess I'm hounds. I think oh, the New York team folded, workers, remember? They went away, right? Yeah, they folded, unfortunately. They folded, so... After I mean, winning one of these, which is terrible for the whole league, for sure. Yeah. We just got this on the, on the pod at some point. Anyway, Corey, um... I guess hounds. I mean, I, I'm not going to just pick a random place I'm never going to go to. Like, during oh, yeah. the, uh... During the XFL, I wanted to try to rally troops to go watch uh, the Battle Hawks because they were playing in DC, and that was like relatively close to me. But it, it got too kinky; too many people were going to weird places, so I didn't I didn't push for it. I but, really um, got to see a Battle Hawks game. I have no excuse. But I think I'm going to try to pick teams where I at least know someone there, and it seems like you're relatively near the Hounds. So like if I'm going to see any team, it's probably gonna be the Hounds. So yeah, I think I'm I'm locked in on the Hounds. Let's go, baby. Hell yeah. It'd be great. Anyway, guys, uh, first round of the playoffs are coming up. Get excited about that. Get excited about the fact that Sports by Tommy is still out here giving you some fun ass content, and which is why you should like subscribe to the boys so Corey can eventually grow a beard. Don't be, true. don't even My beard is one hundred percent dependent on you liking and subscribing. Absolutely. Every single subscriber or person you share this with, Corey's beard will grow like a, a new hair will sprout. I don't know about a whole new hair, but like a some of a hair will some sprout hair. per subscription. So absolutely do it. Mm-hmm. Share it with your friends. Thanks for your time, people. Uh sports becoming more than 